Have you ever been stuck at a red light wishing it didn't exist? You're onto something, but it's not as simple as that. Several roads in the Netherlands have shown that getting rid of traffic lights and reducing the number of lanes leads to improved traffic flows. This might seem completely counterintuitive, but let me explain. This is Van Nijnrodewech, located in the southern part of Amsterdam. Back in the 1970s, it had four lanes of traffic, but today it has been narrowed to just two lanes. Smaller intersections work just fine and don't have traffic lights, which is the concept of drive slow and go faster. The idea is that traffic flows more efficiently when vehicles travel at uniform low speeds rather than constantly speeding up and braking, which happens when there are traffic lights at every intersection. This concept has been implemented throughout the Netherlands and works great. So why did the city redesign this street? How did they do it? And what benefits has it brought? This street is what you would call a traffic area or a distributor road, prioritizing traffic flow and allowing journeys to be made at a consistent speed. To maintain smooth traffic flow, there's no parking on the main road. Instead, parallel access roads in the residential area allow residents to park their cars and access their homes. If you're unfamiliar with the categorization of public space into traffic and residential areas, I highly recommend watching one of my previous videos, as this is the most important aspect of Dutch urban planning to understand. Looking at old pictures from the 1970s, parts of the street were already well developed. There were curbside protected bike lanes on both sides of the street. This part of the street had painted medians and traffic islands to make pedestrian crossings safer. Today, the street has been narrowed to just one lane in each direction, separated by a grass median, which significantly enhances safety for everyone. The issue with wide streets like this, with multiple lanes and no physical barrier in the middle, is that they are inherently unsafe. The concept behind drive slow and go faster is that traffic moves in small groups at uniform low speeds. Essentially, roads that once had multiple lanes and large complex signalized intersections are being redesigned into simpler configurations. There are no traffic lights, there is one lane in each direction, and preferably a median in the middle, which functions as a turning space and prevents overtaking. Extra lanes are added only before large intersections. This is because a road's capacity is primarily determined by its intersections rather than by the number of lanes. If done correctly, reducing the number of lanes to only two makes traffic flow smoother and safer and improves the quality of life around. This concept has been implemented in several places in the country. In Utrecht, this large road had traffic lights removed, the number of lanes was reduced and a grass median was constructed. The same was done here in Arnhem, and there are several other places where the concept has been implemented to achieve smoother traffic flow. Implementing this concept lowers fuel consumption, lowers air and noise pollution, and enhances safety and livability. Separating oncoming traffic with a physical barrier is crucial for preventing head-on collisions, which are among the most dangerous types of road crashes. Because traffic moves at slower speeds and with only one lane in each direction, traffic lights are not necessary everywhere. This setup creates a smoother traffic flow with vehicles traveling at consistent lower speeds, reducing the need to constantly stop and accelerate, which is the case with traffic lights everywhere. For example, here there are no traffic lights and instead there are warning markings and a speed bump. The median also serves as a waiting space for cars turning left, ensuring steady traffic flow for those continuing straight. There are different types of intersections for these roads, however, covering these deserves its own video. On our street, groups of vehicles naturally form at signalized intersections, such as this one with a large distributor road where a traffic light is necessary. When the light turns green, a group of cars starts moving, and this cluster can travel a significant distance before reaching the next signalized intersection. When this group of vehicles passes, a noticeable gap in traffic appears, allowing pedestrians and cyclists to cross the street safely in two stages using the median. The reason why pedestrians often don't get a priority crossing is because this will disrupt the clusters. You might wonder though, won't cars from connecting roads between the signalized intersections merge in and disrupt these clusters? They won't, since all except one of the surrounding streets are in residential areas that restrict through traffic. The volume of vehicles entering or exiting our street is very low. This keeps the gaps largely intact, ensuring safe crossing opportunities for pedestrians. Ideally, pedestrians should be able to cross the street in a single go. However, when traffic volumes are higher, a median becomes essential to allow pedestrians to cross safely in two stages. 
If traffic volumes increase further, waiting times can become excessively long, especially for children and the elderly, and then gaps in traffic flow have to be adjusted. In Utrecht, a busy four-lane road was redesigned according to this concept. However, due to high traffic volumes, the connecting distributor road struggled to merge and pedestrians had difficulty crossing. To address this, a traffic light was installed that detects real-time traffic and thus operates mostly during rush hour, creating effective gaps for pedestrians to cross and allowing traffic from side streets to merge safely. To form effective clusters, preventing overtaking is essential. This approach reduces overall speeds as the slowest vehicle sets the pace for everyone behind it, resulting in a steady traffic flow of around 40 km an hour, even if the speed limit is usually 50 km an hour. Additionally, planting trees along the roadway helps reduce speeds. And of course, planting this many trees transforms an ordinary street into a beautiful inviting space that becomes more than just a thoroughfare for traffic. It becomes a place where people can enjoy their surroundings, adding to the overall livability of the area. To emphasize pedestrian and cyclist priority, where a traffic area meets a residential area, a continuous pavement is preferred. This old picture from the late 70s shows an intersection where pedestrians and cyclists had to drop down to street level. Today, a continuous pavement has been built, keeping pedestrians and cyclists at the same level. This visually signals that they have priority, while the beveled curbs act as speed bumps to slow down drivers and indicate entry or exit from a residential area. Ideally, there should be a waiting space between the roadway and the bike lane so the drivers can first yield to people walking and cycling and then to drivers without blocking the bike lane. This waiting space also improves visibility by creating a right angle for drivers turning from the traffic area into the residential area. Additionally, it serves as a waiting area, allowing traffic on the distributor road to keep flowing smoothly while a car yields to a cyclist. Unfortunately, at this intersection, somebody messed up here and the resurfaced bike lane is poorly aligned with the intersection. Aside from that, most of the bike lanes have been resurfaced. Previously, they were tiled, as seen in older pictures, but today there is new asphalt, making cycling much smoother and more comfortable. The bike lanes are also wide enough to cycle side by side with a friend while allowing room for a stranger to pass without requiring you to move over. The bike lanes are physically separated from the roadway by grass and trees, making cycling very safe and comfortable. In the old pictures, you can see that the trees were planted more than 50 years ago, when the street already had cycling infrastructure, though it lacked a median. At this intersection, cyclists weren't physically protected. However, in the 70s, the intersection was redesigned with traffic islands to provide physical protection for cyclists. Protected intersections separate cyclists from turning cars, which is crucial for ensuring safe intersections. Other improvements include shifting from bike lane markings on brick surfaces. In older pictures, bike lane markings were painted on top of brick roads. Now, different colored bricks are used, which are more durable. The street has also introduced special shark teeth tiles, a priority marking instead of using paint on top of bricks. Also, this intersection now is raised, making crossing for pedestrians easier. Reducing the number of lanes will understandably draw criticism, particularly the concern that it will worsen traffic. However, the argument I hear the most often, why building streets like this is a bad idea, is what about emergency vehicles? If there are only two lanes of traffic and a grass median in the middle, emergency vehicles will get stuck during heavy traffic. No, they won't. A slightly raised median is something that a car can easily drive over and the curb can be specifically designed with a gentle slope to make it even easier. And of course, emergency vehicles can also use either of the bike lanes that are wide enough for a car to fit on. This is another great argument for building wide bike lanes, is that they not only allow cyclists and people with disabilities to move around safely, but also provide a clear path for emergency vehicles when needed. Another possible argument against the concept is that pedestrians often don't get priority crossings. However, it appears to be working well overall, with the benefits outweighing the drawbacks, and people can still cross the street without any major issues. Streets like this are great examples of improving traffic flow, road safety, and livability, transforming boring traffic arteries into more welcoming places. It may seem counterintuitive, but reducing the number of lanes doesn't actually worsen traffic. Just look at most signalized intersections in the Netherlands. Many of them start with a single lane that splits into multiple lanes near the intersection. Water streets like this will continue to play a role as they are essential for connecting major areas. Most city streets, however, should be designed to minimize space allocated for cars 
and in this video, we will explore the transformation of another street in the city to show how this can be achieved.